Hey, Morton, thanks for joining us. Uh, tell us a little bit about OneSoil. Hi, Will. So thank you, first of all, for inviting me. Um, so one soil, at one soil, we are really excited about agriculture. We're excited about new technology for precision farming, about artificial intelligence and data. And at the same time, we want to make a world uh, that's a better place to live in. So one soil's mission is to develop digital solutions to make farming more profitable for the farmers and at the same time to help save the planet. So our farmer application is a digital solution allowing farmers to treat their fields according to each field's heterogeneous properties. So that is, in fact, you know, more than 70% of all fields in the world are heterogeneous. Mm. So that means that plants develop differently in different parts of the field. Mm. And um, our solution, it measures and analyzes the in-field variability, and then provides a prescription for a variable application of seeds, fertilizer, chemicals. And we do all this based on satellite remote sensing and, uh, and magic AI. Amazing. I mean, coming into this, it, it sort of seemed like farming was the furthest thing from high tech. And But it really sounds like you've helped to usher in a uh, new era of precision farming techniques. Uh, and like you said, using satellite imagery, AI, machine learning, and, and data. Tell me about how farmers are adopting uh, the tech. So, you know, like think about a farmer, right? I mean, a farmer has this amazing daily user experience. If you think mm -hmm. about user experience, he has, uh, you know, unpredictable things. It's very variable. He's, uh, has many different tasks. He has an office. He's working with many different applications on his computer, on his phone, from suppliers, customers, from uh, he has management work with his teams, advisors. He even goes into the field, right? He's, he's mm -hmm. maybe driving a tractor and doing crop scouting. And he's always dependent on, on things like weather, for instance. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of uncertainty. So the last thing that farmers want when they talk about or they have to use data and digital solutions, it is more complexity yeah so basically you know uh, the the considering this daily ux challenge of, uh, of farmers providing solutions in an easy to use way is super critical uh and uh, to make the let's say actual impact of the of the content of the application and and the content one soil has is technical it's agronomic it's engineering driven solution but the application itself has been developed together with and by, you know, really design professionals mm -hmm. and also with inputs from, from many thousands of farm users that have been using the app over time. Uh, and basically the focus on making it very easy to use everywhere on any device. I love that, the focus on, on user experience and in challenging environments, you know, out in the field, uh, different conditions, like, and, and, I, and I love to think about how location technology can help build a better user experience. And I think this is, this is of course, the key here, right? So the, the UX for data about field, it will always contain a map, right? Yeah. And geolocation. So mm -hmm. the starting point for any visualization and analytics that we do is the map. And this is, you know, the map box map for us is a critical element of our application from a UX uh, a UI point of view. Yeah. Um, so what about the environmental impact of a technology like this? So this is so so this is super important, right? But the first impact to make this actually adapted and used by farmers is the economic impact also. So mm -hmm. to get back to the question, right, why are farmers adopting it? So farmers are entrepreneurs and business people, but they're also the custodians of the soil, right? So the yeah. soil is the unique resource which feeds the world. And technology that we provide and technology in general that helps farmers become more profitable and preserve the environment at the same time is, of course, here an enormous opportunity. Because if we can, and this is what this uh, technology does, it meets the financial objective of driving, environment, uh, of driving economic profit for mm -hmm. the farmer and at the same time also driving an, an environmental positive impact. You know, then it's magic because it will be used. So this is why farmer adopt to our solution. 
It helps them earn more, but at the same time, it also helps them reduce their environmental uh, emissions, uh, which is, you know, to, to the questions you just asked, right? Yeah, yeah, it's highly aligned. It's like win-win, uh, right? So it, it, exactly. helps, it helps save yeah. money, it helps make something more, make the farming operation more efficient, but also helps the environment. So, exactly. so what kind of impact are we looking at in terms of the environment? So, so when you talk about uh, the, um, let's say, the, the, maybe this, the economic impact, right? We've measured uh, with this, the tool really is doing, a, has a measurement. So we have the ability to measure the result of this variable use of the fields. Mm -hmm. And we've measured over half a million acres of field trials. We measured around 10% average profitability increase on, uh, on wow. the field. Uh -huh. Now that's that's money, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And when when you talk about the environment in the in the U.S., the environmental uh, agency uh, has like a projection of a greenhouse gas, uh, let's say, uh, emissions in the United States, mm -hmm. and they say that 11 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions in U.S. come from agriculture. So wow. you know that's a lot, right? So it means that industrialized crop production is, which is farming today, is actually kind of bad for the environment. Yeah. Right? Um, but the problem is we just passed 8 billion people. We've got to feed the world so that, that we cannot just turn off the farming here. So however, glass half full, half empty, right? Mm -hmm. So agriculture is at the same time, it's a bad guy. It's also an enormous opportunity and potential because if we get it right, we can actually sequest greenhouse gases using the natural processes and plant potential plant growth, uh, and soil regeneration to to basically put carbon back in the soil uh, and to reduce the surplus emissions that agriculture is doing. So if we use precision farming methods that take these things into account, the heterogeneity of the fields, uh, and we combine that with the measurement, we can then basically uh, manage the process to optimize the use of nutrients uh, and the strategies for the operational practices, and then drive down the negative impact of, let's say, waste. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we, we can actually move towards a net positive impact on emissions uh, by sequestering and going to more, uh, more uh, um, regenerative practices, right? Wow. Um, I love that. I mean, it's like, it's like uh, taking, taking what is a source of carbon emission and not only reducing that emission, but also converting it into a sink, like an actual... Uh, uh way to reduce re way to reduce the emission i i think that's that's okay, really correct right so today i mean farming again you're, you're applying fertilizer this is normal you cannot farm without fertilizer yeah. uh, and uh, basically the excess nitrogen fertilization that is being done is really a bad guy because nitrogen which is not being used by the plants it basically reacts with the with the with the air and turns into N2O, and N2O is a greenhouse gas which has a, an effect which is almost 300 times worse than CO2. Wow. So, so, you know, the last thing we want is to have fertilizer spread into the land that is not being used by the plants. And this yeah. technology basically matches the plant's need and allows the farmer to match the plant need with the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you know, number one, remove excess and then also help him identify these regenerative practices, right? And, and one example <clears throat> that we have is uh, here in spring of 22, a big corporate farm. They used the, uh, the 21 results to change their nitrogen fertilizer application rates, saving 200 tons of nitrogen. And they did this on 18,000 acres of cornfields. And you know, 200 tons of nitrogen, that equates to 75,000 tons of CO2 emissions. So we're, it's not small number we're talking about. It's, that's that's amazing. I mean, it, the it, the impact is, I mean, the opportunity, that's just one farm, that's just one partner, right? So- uh, Of course, like 18,000 acres is, is a big farm, but, yeah. uh, but yes, it is. I mean, there's 1.3 billion hectares. So I guess that's, you know, three four billion acres of agricultural land in the world big opportunity um before we wrap up what are the trends that you're seeing uh that you think will create a more sustainable world so i mean again for agriculture uh, where we operate the the use or the wider use of data of ai and of automation 
this is going to be critical drivers for optimal productivity and for realization of these regenerative practices. So we must utilize these technologies to match the best possible, you know, plant growth or crop growth under the given conditions, taking not only the, the let's say, short-term economic uh, perspective, but also the short and long-term perspective of sustainability and land management, so the, the use of the resources into account. And, and the nice thing is that the profit and the sustainability in this case actually goes hand in hand, because the more regenerative I make my, my practices, the better I get the soil, the better I will have a long-term productivity. Got it. I see. Well, Morton, thanks for joining us today. I uh, learned a lot about uh, one soil and uh, precision farming. Uh, really excited and uh, to see see what happens next. And uh, thanks again for joining. Thank you so much, Will. It was a pleasure to be here.